You're watching Access Minnesota. Here's Jim Dubois. Weather can make or break a farmer's crop yield, but plant disease is another enemy of agriculture. A current exhibit at the University of Minnesota's Anderson Library commemorates the work of a pioneering plant pathologist who helped launch the Green Revolution. Aaron George is the assistant archivist at the Elmer L. Anderson Library on the University of Minnesota campus. Aaron, welcome to Access Minnesota. Thank you. Anderson Library is featuring an exhibit titled Minnesota Roots of the Green Revolution, a Legacy of Greatness. Tell us more about that exhibit. Sure. The exhibit was inspired by two grant-funded projects that we did, and the exhibit was actually curated by two of the people who were heavily involved in those projects, Beth Kaplan, who's the university archivist, and Susan Hoffman, who is a project archivist working on primarily one of the grants. And the two grants were funded through what's commonly known as the Legacy Amendment and through the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Money was received to do to work with two areas. One was with the Green Revolution materials. And the Green Revolution is commonly known as a project in the mid-20th century to try to increase crop production and crop quality to um, help alleviate the problems with chronic failure, crop failure. So really to help alleviate world hunger that came from chronic crop failure. So what they did with the Green Revolution materials is to make them more accessible, they did a fairly large scale digitization project, bringing together six different collections where they were able to digitize about 58 cubic feet of material that came out to be about 100,000 images. And it's everything from photos to letters, correspondence reports, and they're from some premier collections, the papers of Dr. Norman Borlaug, Dr. Elvin Stakeman, um, professors John Gibbler and Helen Hart, and then also the records from the plant pathology department and the Serial Rust Laboratory. So that was one of the grants, really making those things accessible online to people. Then the other grant is called Harvesting Minnesota's Agricultural History. And that was a more traditional processing project to organize and catalog over 1,700 cubic feet of material having to do with the history of agriculture in Minnesota and the university's role in it. So it was everything from collegiate records, some individual professors' papers, department records, so that they are more easily searchable. There are online finding aids or collection guides that researchers can use. And then for those materials, they would come in here to the archives to actually work with the material. So as those two projects were finishing up this summer, Beth and Susan thought about a great way to celebrate the completion of those projects and the use of the legacy funds and thought an exhibit would be a wonderful way to do it. When we hear the words green revolution, we often mm -hmm. think of them in terms of current green trends. For example, solar energy, wind energy, waste reduction, etc. What does green mean though in the context of this particular exhibit? For this exhibit, it's more closely tied to the idea of that revolution in agriculture that started very early on, especially with some work done here in the University of Minnesota in the late 1800s and early 1900s, thinking about ways to alleviate chronic crop failure. One of the biggest um, problems is rusts, the pathogens that will attack wheat and other crops so that entire fields fail. And that would have a direct impact on the food that's available for people, not just here in the United States, but across the country. So the Green Revolution was a large scale way to try to help alleviate those problems with chronic crop failure, thinking about not only how you stop the reproduction of the rusts, but also how you make hardier crops that will survive in different climates, different parts of the world, and would really be sort of those base crops that would help feed more people. So to what extent did E.C. Stakeman and the U of M influence the current green trend that we see today? Um, Norman Borlaug is commonly known as the father of the Green Revolution, and Elvin Stakeman is known as the grandfather of the Green Revolution. His work starting in the plant pathology department in the early 1900s really set some of the, the large-scale research in motion. One of the things he was charged with doing, and that was a focus for his academic and his professional life, was the um, eradication of barberry, which is a key plant in the cycle for rust and the way it will reproduce season after season. So he did a great deal of work with that in the early 1900s, especially around the time of World War I, where barberry would be um, taken out of um, the field areas near wheat crops. And once that was done and was done in a large scale way, then the wheat crops would be much more successful. And, we were, and the United States was able to do more um, exporting to Europe 
and to the Allies after World War I. So his work in that was key in thinking about ways that you can stop that chronic crop failure. And he was also a great mentor to several scientists, and one of them was Norman Borlaug, who received his undergraduate and graduate degrees here at the university. And it was actually hearing um, Dr. Stegman talk about wheat rust and the battle against it that helped inspire him to get into plant pathology. And from there, they had a lifelong association. And um, working with Dr. Stegman really inspired Dr. Borlaug to think about other ways to um, fight that chronic crop failure, think about the different parts of the world and, and their need for food, and to stop that, um, that food supply problem that would lead to hunger. What do you hope people will take away from this exhibit? Well, we hope a better understanding of the work that was done and the people who were involved. And then also the amount of work that was done. I think one of the highlights of the exhibit is seeing a case full of about 120 of the field notebooks that Dr. Borlaug used. And these were meticulous notes that he would take as he was doing different experiments in fields around the world. So I think just getting a sense of that work and how long it was in coming and how the work of different scientists and scholars build on each other and how it's all been connected with a lot of other work that's been done here at the university and across the world and what a difference it continues to make. Erin George, Assistant Archivist at the Elmer L. Anderson Library on the University of Minnesota campus, thanks so much for joining us on Access Minnesota. Thank you. When Access Minnesota returns, a U of M expert tells us how even slight changes in climate can have a significant impact on agriculture. Access Minnesota will return after these messages.